Uh, good morning, welcome to Bottom of the Fell. Today we're going to talk about the cashew bins and compost. We've rearranged our compost bins the way we compost everything, so we're going to show you some of that. I'm going to show you the process of the cashew bins, explain how to do it, explain what you can do with the end product. So here we go. So I'm just cleaning out the old Bakashi bin, the old, the used Bakashi bin, just because it's been outside for a while, it's got some algae and mould growing on there and we don't want that in our Bakashi bin. So this is an empty Bakashi bin to show you how it works. You, it's damp at the minute but you'd make sure it was dry. You have your tray that goes at the bottom with holes so the liquid can drain through and as you see there's um, a rim that the uh, tray sits on. Put your food on top and your lid. Here is our bakashi bin. Um, you need two bins. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you how you fill it up. So you fill it up, you leave it for two weeks and then you start your second one once this one's full. So I'm just going to show you with one. There's not much in it at the, min at the moment. Some peelings and some veg. Um, so what you need to do, you need to get your bran. So this is your bran. It's a byproduct of beer production. It's enriched with effective microorganisms, uh, molasses, amongst other things. It's um, basically helps start the fermentation process. It's of you've got all the good bacteria in that you need. Uh, you need to put quite a liberal coating over the product you're putting in. And then you need to get your 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 old food that you're putting in you've got to make sure that it's small if it's not small it's not going to uh, break down correctly so so here we've got quite a few things from our kitchen we've got pasta potato peelings there's tomatoes um, quite a few other bits potato uh, turnip you can put pretty much anything in your bakashi bin uh, that you can't normally put in some other compost you can put fats in you can put meats in cooked food that's waste uh, the you can put small bones don't put big bones in they're not going to break down but anything small like little chicken bones are absolutely fine you've just got to make sure everything's nice and small so layer it up you need to put pop your food in on top of everything else um don't make it thicker than an inch or two and then we're gonna squash as much air out of it as we can you don't want air in there or as little as possible possible then once you've squashed it down, you want to put another good layer of bran on top. That actually helps fill some of the little air pockets that there are as well. So that's the bran on top. And then you want to put your lid on top. Keep it sealed in there. The things so you don't want to put in are foods that have started to go mouldy already. Because the bacteria from the mould will, well, sometimes can overpower the bacteria that's in the bran so it's not going to work properly. Part of the process is that the, there is a liquid that the food produces which collects at the bottom. Um, I can, I'm going to show you an empty bakashi bin later. So the liquid collects at the bottom and then you you can open and close the tap so you need to every couple of days two three days you need to expel the liquid from the bakashi bin you open the tap there is none in it at the minute because it's a new bin uh, open the tap get the liquid out make sure you Quid. close it again the liquid can be used for quite a few different things you can use it as it is as a drain cleaner it's really good for cleaning away algae or you can dilute the liquid approximately 100 to 1 so it's 100 parts water to one part liquid uh, to use as a fertilizer it's really good for your um, leafy plants tomatoes lettuce anything like that and um, they really love it also great for your flowers as well count today we are um, sorting our compost piles out uh, they're in tires at the minute but we've it's just not practical anymore it's great if you're not producing a lot but with the animals we've got it's not practical so this is what we've got at the minute Charlie Charlie thinks he's a chicken um, so we've got stacks of tyres all at different kind of phases of composting it's quite hard to turn them the, to turn the compost though because you've got to remove the tyres stack it up again uh, so we're just making some big 
kind of containers to put everything in. So the way you'd normally do this is that you'd start filling it up and when it gets full you can take one tyre off. Yeah. Put it next, move it over, put the next tyre on, put the next tyre on and so on and so on. Ways of turning the compost. However, we've filled up 16 tyres worth and two plastic compost bins as well. I'd just like to say we have emptied compost from them since we've started but we, it's just not... They're but they're still full. Yeah, we're just not <laughs> making it. We're, we just haven't got the room so. so we need a much simpler much easier way so we're just going to go with uh, posts there and there there ish i don't want to scare mabel there ish um, just using waste wood we're going to put panels up and then we'll just have sort of compost areas that we can cover to prevent the chickens from going to town on them and it's much easier to turn them when they're in large areas as well. So here we go. This is our new comp. Frankie, get out! Hi again. This is our new compost setup that Frankie really, really likes because he can get in it. Um, so we've again we've just used wood that we already had. So an old set of drawers, part of an old rabbit hutch. Um, we'll take you over there. Some fence posts. So we've got it in two separate um, containers. The tyres are temporary, we will be moving those once we get some more wood to make a front for it, a removable front. So this, this is the oldest compost that we have, this has been in the tyres the longest, we've put it here um, all together. Um, so this needs to be turned, we're going to try for once a week, shouldn't take too long, now the air can get to it, uh, the air can get to it and the heat can get to it and the water can drain out properly. Frankie really loves this, he can tell you how great our compost is. Because he's a little shit. So our compost is probably 99% um, waste from the animals, so the poo, the bedding, um, the excess hay. We don't really add much garden waste to it. You can add garden waste, um, but we tend to just shove it all in here together um, and it will still make compost. Once we get into cutting the grass again, the clippings will, of course, go on there. Um, this is the new compost, if you will. This is not been in the tyres as long. This is where we're going to add all the compost when we clean the animals out. You can tell because there's an awful lot more hay that's not broken down in this half. Yeah. Um, so this one, the first one will normally be covered up. We did uncover it just to show you. It will be covered up. <laughs> <laughs> it will be covered up um, so the chickens don't go in it, the dogs don't go in it and we know not to put any new material in there. Um, we'll focus on the second container. Not sure how long this is going to take to actually be ready. Um, we're just going to keep turning it till it looks ready and then once it's ready we will pop it on the garden. So we're hoping that by the time the first one is probably about twice as full as that that this one will be ready to spread, yep. but we don't know. So what do you do with your Bokashi waste? Once your bin's full, make sure you leave it for two weeks. You can either mix it straight with your compost if you have a compost pile. If not, you can put it straight in your flower beds, your vegetable beds. What you need to do is in your beds, dig a trench 10 to 12 inches deep, pop the material, spread it all out in there, cover it up. In our climate, it might take three weeks to fully break down it's the heat helps the rain doesn't help obviously uh, so you need to cover it up make sure you leave it for at least one week if you're going to plant things in there don't plant things in when you have just put it in that's the most important thing it's too rich chickens on the coop <laughs> hi ebers ebony don't want if you don't want to bury the bakashi stuff straight away and you do have a compost pile you can mix it all in because it's already started fermenting it's got the bran in there it will help break down the rest of your compost quicker compost so uh, our potatoes are planted in some compost that we have made it's quite decent stuff and um, you can tell the difference from normal soil which is this gray stuff which we dug up from the riverbank it will get mixed in with compost um, but this is nice, nice, uh, healthy soil that the potatoes are enjoying growing in. 
So why are you holding Frankie? Uh, because he likes to eat compost. Because he's a little shit. <laughs>